and I'm back. Hope you didn't miss me last week. As you can tell by the video title, this is going to be the first in a series of game dev related instructional videos, specifically math for game dev. I'm going to try to convince you, even if you don't like math, that as a game dev or 3D artist, math and the mathematical thought processes can be an invaluable tool set for you. I'll cover things like the trig functions and vectors. And if any of you said, oh, I already know what a vector is. A vector is any element of a vector space. Take your math or physics degree and get Get out. These videos are not for you. A lot of times in school we were just forced to learn things that didn't seem useful to us at the time. After all, no one really needs to know about the Grange laws to be a functioning member of society. So I completely understand if any of you went through school not caring about math. And honestly, aside from math tests, most people don't need to know what the sine of 3 quarter pi is off the top of their head. But for games and 3D art, there are some things that while may not be impossible without it, they are definitely made much easier by knowing some mathematical techniques. At the very least, it's nice to be familiar with the weird math symbols so you can implement, which is a euphemism for a ripoff, things that are just presented as formulas. But I'm going to list off a few things that I've found I can do with math quite easily. Rotating the player and or camera, creating shaders, setting jump height regardless of gravity, setting up basic gliders, decision making for basic AI, copying, again, a euphemism for a ripoff, basic physical models, procedural animation, and more. Hopefully this is enough to convince even those of you with the bitterest of feelings about math that, well, no matter how awful it might be, it sure is practical. And I'm going to extend an olive branch. I don't expect any of you to memorize anything. I personally look at a problem and I think, this looks like an X or a Y problem. Then I search for any relevant formulas or properties because, well, even I haven't memorized all these things since I don't need to know them all the time. And if you're watching these videos, you probably have some kind of access to the internet. So just do as I do and search for the answer to whatever specific question you have. In each video, I'll cover a topic via an actual game dev problem that I'll work through so you can see how I approach and pick it apart and hopefully why that topic is useful. And once you see the techniques I use, you'll be able to take those same techniques and use them for your own problems. But first, a quick aside before I list all the topics I'll be covering. I don't expect you to recognize any or all of the words that I'll use right now. In each video, I'll explain each term when we get to it, and hopefully you'll see it's just some fancy language for a straightforward idea. So here are the videos I'll be releasing in order. First graphing curves and algebra, in which I'll cover how to use and manipulate variables in equations. Unfortunately, it's unavoidable. Algebra is just in everything, and often, in whatever topic we're covering after algebra, the algebra is going to be the hard bit. Second, trigonometry, the study of the relations between angles and sides of a triangle. This is actually the oldest topic I'll be covering, but still useful today. Thank you, Greeks. Third, and hopefully this is a little fun, a function grab bag. There are a lot of useful little functions that are just nice to know, especially as a 3D or shader artist. Fourth, linear algebra, the study of linear equations, vectors, and matrices. Fifth will be calculus, in which I'll go over and describe how to find both the rate of change of a curve along with the area under it. This is actually a very easy topic. Again, it's just the algebra that's hard. Sixth, probability, then statistics. I'll cover how to describe and analyze random events with math. Then I'll go over a handful of random variables and their applications as well. And then I'll briefly cover how to use probability on actual data, aka statistics. Seventh and the last planned out one will be fuzzy logic. This is a more advanced but quite simple topic. How to model decisions using probabilities instead of precise true or false values. It's extremely applicable to AIs. I've ordered these topics so there's a degree of building up to future ones, but the first four videos will be the only ones that you 3D or shader artists really need, with linear algebra probably being the most useful for you. But after that, your mileage may vary. So, I won't be offended if you stop watching. And aside from these seven specific videos, I might do more in the future. I already have some things written down that I might do, but if any of you have anything you want me to do a video on, please let me know what to cover and I probably will make a video about it. And that's it for this video. Hopefully I've excited you enough to stick around for the first actual topic, graphing curves and algebra. As I talked about last video, I'm going to be mixing these in with my game devlogs since 
it's going to be hard for me to make and edit videos regularly. So I'll just make a bunch of these in advance and release as needed. As always, I appreciate you taking your time to watch this and I hope you have a good day. If you like the video, please give it a like and if you want to follow along with either this tutorial series or my regular game dev stuff, please subscribe to my channel. And again, I won't be releasing game dev videos that regularly for the next few months at least, but I will be posting game dev updates on Twitter. So follow me there at dev underscore Natsu, uh, link in the description. I also post pictures of my bread on Twitter when I bake it. So if you like the bread, please follow as well. And speaking of bread, let's get to it. So the last bread I made was focaccia. I had some uh, fresh rosemary, so it came out real nice. And you know, I tried the, I, usually my I make focaccia over two days, you know, just let it have a cold ferment overnight. But I made this one in just one day, and um, it wasn't as poofy as uh, my regular two-day method, unfortunately. But I think I was at like 85% hydration here, which again, that's t that's too high for my bread. Um, I mean, my bread flour, it just it's just not strong enough, not enough gluten in it. So, but still, you know. You know, focaccia is a it's a favorite personally. I mean, everybody likes it. It's because you know it's all the olive oil and salt and spices and herbs. So it's it's good regardless, even if it's not as poofy as it could have been. But uh, yeah, I mean, I still I used uh, as always. I use my sourdough starter for the biga, and um, you know if we you know, if you look at the crumb, I'm just gonna zoom in on that real fast. It's still a very airy crumb, and uh, I think I had this in uh, some nice sandwiches. So, yeah, it was great. And as always, uh, you know, just going to use the regular sign-off. Um, the yeast in the air is free. Uh, you should make your own bread. It's great. It's good for you. It's delicious. It's great.